Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today a fascinating looking neatly symmetrical puzzle by Eric Rathbun, the palindrome scratch pad. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Don't forget that there is still time to enter this month's Patreon competition, Alice in Sudoku Land, a brilliant series of Japanese sum Sudoku puzzles by the Paint by Numbers Institute, aka Panthera, Monty Knox and the Asylum, who are brilliant constructors and the collection has received a lot of praise. We've had a ton of entries. Um, there are still enough time to get three puzzles done and enter the competition, though it's too late for the shout out now. But that is on Patreon, along with lots of other content there. Now, on the 22nd, John Halpin will be doing the third of his Creating a Cryptic Crossword with a Celebrity talks um, with Monica Grady, a space scientist who, um, yeah, is not maybe as well known as some of the other celebrities, but should be. And uh, that's going to be good. I'm sure it's going to be a space themed crossword. Uh, you need to register on John's website and uh, donate us an amount to Monica's charity, I think, to make that work. Now, what else we got going on? We've got our apps, of course, and soon, very soon, we believe, Gas 2, the, uh, the return of the genuinely approachable Sudoku, uh, a second app of Puzzles that will build to a total of 60 um, as they get released into the app. And that'll be available. The first, I guess, 30 of those will be available soon. Um, what else have we got? We've got our merchandise. But the first link under the video is to this puzzle called the Palindrome Scratchpad. This comes from Eric Rathbun, who we've featured on the channel a few times, but not, I think, for some time. Um, the rules are relatively straightforward, as long as you know about palindromes. So normal Sudoku rules apply. That's going to be the numbers 1 to 9 in every row, column and box. Um, and a clue outside the grid. These are called little killer clues. They show the sums of the diagonals they indicate. So those seven cells add up to 39. They could include repeats or not. Um, that's fine. And... Then there's a king's move constraint. This is quite important to note. It's probably one of those puzzles where you can get quite some way solving without the king's move constraint, but it's going to be actually very important. So two cells that touch each other, even diagonally, cannot have the same digit. Uh, let's try and remember that, because the iron rule of chess constraints is that I will forget them at some point during the solve. Um, now, grey lines are palindromes, which read the same forwards and backwards, and there is a note that all the palindromes in this puzzle are straight lines with no bends. And that's to stop us thinking of something like this as a long old palindrome. It's not. Um, the palindrome, oops, in that case, ends there because all the palindromes are straight lines here. So that uh, palindrome, of course, is a set of digits that read the same forwards and backwards. So in that instance, those two digits must be the same because they're on each end of the line. Do give it a try on the first link under the video. I am going to reset my clock and start now. Let's get cracking. So, we don't have many numbers to go on. I don't think any of these given little killer clues are going to get us started. They're just too middly. Um, so I think this may be a colouring puzzle because what I can see is that this cell is going to be a bit of a replicant. It's going to appear on the other end of the palindrome. Let's colour them. And then on this next palindrome that that's brought it to, it's got to appear there in the penultimate position. Oh, OK, that doesn't replicate on this palindrome, but because it's in the centre, the centre digit doesn't have to repeat anywhere. Actually, all of these palindromes are three or five cells long. They all have a centre digit that does nothing. <laughs> um, and OK, King's Move. I haven't forgotten it yet, and that is really important, re much earlier than I was expecting in this puzzle, because we can colour this into the central box. Look, if I'm right, that cell sees those by Sudoku and those two by King's Move. So orange can't be in any of those. This one, it's exactly the same shape rotated. It sees all of those cells. And now we've covered all of those cells that can't be orange. So I think we can all see where orange goes in the central box. And sadly, it's again on the middle of a palindrome and it doesn't replicate. But we can put it into one of those two in box four. 
Oh, look, yes, we can actually get it to within two cells here. So in box seven, it can't be in there because of that. It can't be in that group of cells because of that orange. It cannot be here because of the palindrome. It would also be here. And that again falls foul of this orange. It can't be here because it would be here. And that falls foul of this orange. The only two cells we've got left are these two heading into the corner. I'm just wondering if the same, no, the same won't apply in box three. Oh, but it will apply in box nine. All of those are ruled out on ordinary Sudoku grounds. And these by the palindrome. So we've got two spots again. Now, what about this box? It cannot be here for King's Move reasons. I'd forgotten that already let alone palindrome reasons. But it also can't be here for palindrome reasons because it would be in this cell. So orange is, oh, it can't be here for just ordinary Sudoku reasons. So we actually place it in box two. And that's on the palindrome. Yes, this is all good. This is all good. Um, we can then get rid of those colorings. We've got it now in box seven and box nine and we must have one left in box three that's all the oranges so i think the symmetry we've only used the palindrome lines for this and the king's move constraint and i think the symmetry is going to drive blue around the grid in much the same way yeah again look all of these are ruled out in the central box blue is clearly not the same as orange so we have that added bonus it's in one of those two um, I can't quite work out what the symmetrical arrangement that gave it to me in the other box was. Oh, is it? No, this row? It's, it's not that. Oh, I know. I looked at this as a box. Oh, it can't be there. I was right to look at this as a box. It can't be there because it would be here on the palindrome. Dummy. Right, so it's there. Then... Oh, one of those two. Hang on, I haven't, I haven't quite got this yet. Right, it is, of course. It's, oh, it's repeating on the palindrome three times. But if it's there on the palindrome, it has to be on the other end. Now it can't be here because it would also be here. So it's in the corner. It's in one of these two, but it can't be on the palindrome. So it's there. This one is done now. And I think we've got all the oranges and blues done. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's gorgeous. That's so clever, Eric. Okay, so this little killer clue is now three blue and three orange and a cell. And this one is three blue, three orange and a cell. So these cells have to differ by exactly as much as their clues differ by, which is eight. And therefore, to be Sudoku digits, that's glorious. They have to be ooh, nine below and sorry, nine above and one below. Now we know that blue and orange times three adds up to 30. And we we'll do a tiny bit of algebra and divide that equation through by three. Sorry, what we know is that three blue and three orange equals 30. We divide that all through by three. And we understand that blue and orange equals 10. So that's a nine, and yes, that's a one. I, that, okay, having, having established all the blue and oranges, it would have been much simpler for me to look in boxes one and nine at these differences, but I didn't. Anyway, nine and one are not the same as blue or orange because they appear in the same boxes. So in this, in column eight, we can place nine because it can't be blue. And we're not forgetting the king's move rule. So we can stick it there. And in column two, it's exactly symmetrical. The symmetry is utterly beautiful in this puzzle and must only be broken, I suppose, by the white dots. Um, we have to break down the symmetry somewhere. Otherwise, there are two possible solutions to the puzzle. Um, right, let's consider ones then. Yes, these cells, none of those Yes, there we go. None of those can be a one. This is perfect. None of those can be a one. Now, you understand why those can't be a one. 
These are blue and orange, and they're obviously different from one. These two, oops, those two, are on palindromes that drop into the bottom line. Um, so they can't have ones in those cells. So there is a one in these two, and it's a white dot. So that's a one-two pair. We also get a one in one of those cells. And it is finally occurring to me. Blue and orange is a pair that adds up to 10. I've actually finished with the little killer clues, as long as I remember to enforce that at some point. Um, and we have very little in terms of numbers in the rest of the puzzle. So it's going to be the white dots that actually desegregate the numbers, that, that disambiguate what they all mean, which is a bit strange. Anyway, we've got a one there. This is a one-two pair. Now we know that two is not in blue or orange. So blue and orange are either 3, 7 as a pair adding up to 10, or 4, 6. Uh, ah, and we've got this string now. Oh. OK, I'm going to make a very odd mark there. A pencil mark. Now, the reason I'm able to do that is this is a trio of consecutive digits because of the white dots. Now, if we had 1, 4, 6, remember 4, 6 and 3, 7 are the possible groupings of blue and orange. If we had 1, 4, 6, you couldn't use 2, 3 and 5 in these cells either because you couldn't get a sequence of 3. So they would be 7, 8, 9, 8 would be in the middle. If we were to use 1, 3, 7, which is the alternative, you couldn't use 2. Now you couldn't use 8 or 9. These would be a string of 4, 5, 6 with the 5 in the middle. So that cell is 5 or 8. And I mean, I suppose by the same token, these are from 4, 6, 7 or 9. Maybe there's a way that we know more about 9s. I need to do more work on 9s. Yes, I got work done on 1s, didn't I? So where does 9 go in this box? Well, yeah, OK, not in any of those cells because of these have their other ends of the palindrome in row one. So nine's in one of those two. Oops, nine. So that takes nine out of this cell, which takes seven out of this one. Ah, and by Sudoku, nine has to be in one of these two, and we know where it is now. There we go. Nine, that's lovely, actually. Nine, eight, seven. So this is the six, four pair. It can't be seven, three anymore. And now we know that all orange and blue are four and six in the puzzle. And that's a 2, 3, 5 triple. They go on the other ends of two palindromes. This pair can't be, can't use, 1, 4, 6 or 9. It's either a 2, 3 pair or a 7, 8 pair. Don't know which. It's going to be the white dots though that disambiguate all the numbers in this puzzle. Um, I suppose one of the four or sixes must be on a white dot somewhere. There it is. So this cell is even, no, odd, I mean, is three, five, or seven. That's on a palindrome, so this is three, five, or seven. But this cell, which is now even, can't be four or six. It's two or eight, but look, it can't be two because of that one, two pair. So I think this, the own, yes, because... That's even, that's odd. That's on the palindrome, so that's odd. This is even, and it sees 6 and 4 and a 2. So that is 8. And this is 7, and now we're away. We're away in a hack to the races, and suddenly blue is 6, and we've suddenly done all of blue and orange. Um, I've gone from having about 6 cells filled with digits to having about 26. Um, I am estimating wildly there. Now... Six, one, two, eight, four, seven is in one of those cells. Mm, yeah, OK, I'm going to use that quite interestingly. Right, seven is in one of these cells because of the position of these sevens. If it is here, then seven is here. If it is not here, then seven is here. Now, what that means is that seven is in one of these two cells and that none of the rest of the cells in the column can be 7. 
and I'm particularly interested in having that disproved as 7 for my purposes now. Because once that can't be 7, the 7 we've got in box 1 rules out those, and now 7 has to be in one of those two places. I think you could do the similar thing and prove again it's not in that cell, but it's pointless from the row and the palindrome. I'm not going to do that. And maybe it's not going to help at all to have put 7 in one of those two, but it's a narrowing that I hadn't expected to be able to do, so I was quite interested. Um, now, eight. Oh, the king's move. Don't forget the king's move. I don't think I am. I may even have been bearing it in mind without saying it lately, but anyway, I mustn't forget it, obviously. Oh, I don't quite know what else to do. Um, I thought we were flowing along brilliantly, and now I've got ground to a halt by presumably my own ineptitude. Um... Right. I need to find something clever. Right, here's something not very clever, but useful. Nine there sees all of those by King's Move. That nine sees that cell. So the nine in box four is in one of those two. And then the nine in row four has to be in one of these two. Oh, this is a gorgeous relationship. I don't know that I've ever seen this work before, but it's really clever. So we know 9 is in one of these two cells that I've just highlighted. If it was in that one, the 9 in box 2, which is in one of these two, gets pushed into the palindrome for Sudoku reasons, because once you've got a 9 here, you can't have another one in the same column. Alternatively, there isn't a 9 here, there's one here. And then, for palindrome reasons, the 9 goes here. And the 9, therefore, always ends up here. And that pushes back onto the palindrome here. And we know that 9 in the middle row, in fact, the middle column, we know exactly where it is in the grid. It's down here. That's so elegant. Then we have 9s in one of these two cells, and they form a sort of X-wing. They're the last 9s in the grid. Now, have I missed being able to do this with 1s? probably have and I don't quite understand how. Here we go. No, it's because we had the white dot and I knew where 9 was. Right, here, because we've got 1 in one of those positions, I know these don't contain a 1. And I know that doesn't for Sudoku reasons, but unfortunately I can't prove there isn't a 1 here. So I can't do the same thing with 1s at the top of the grid. Um, so I'm going to have to just rest on my laurels with that 9. Now, what else can we do? We've got 2, 3 and 5 still to populate column 2. Oh, this palindrome says this is a 1 or a 2. That's quite interesting. Ooh. Yeah, no, this does work the same way with 1s. I had not worked this out. Right, the one I'm looking at here tells me that there's no 1 in those cells. So there's a 1 somewhere in one of these three. And now you can just ask again, where does 1 go here? If it goes on the palindrome, clearly 1 goes on the palindrome in box 5, because of the palindrome rule. But if it goes here, that rules out both of those cells. So it must still go on the palindrome in box 5. Then you can run it into box 8 there and put a 2 there. Get rid of those 1 pencil marks. And it did work exactly the same way, although with slightly less um, information, which is really interesting. It's a very clever puzzle, by the way. These are from 358. Yes, this is finally telling me something I should have been able to work out before, which is where does 2 go in the bottom row? And it doesn't go there because it would be in the same box on the other end of the palindrome. So 2 goes here. That's 3, 5, or 8. So at the top of the grid, I'm getting 2, 3, 5. So at the bottom, I'm getting 3, 5, 8. I might have to move into colouring to... I think it's all going to revolve around what makes up that, that pair of cells. The last white dot. Yes, I think it is. But for now, let's see if I can keep going with a bit of Sudoku. If I can't, I'm going to start colouring soon. Um, colouring fans will be getting excited. 
There's a two in one of those two. Uh, that doesn't prove anything except that that isn't two. Nine, six, four, seven. Seven can't be there or there. Not that interesting, is it? Seven's in one of those three. Right, we're going a colouring now. Let's see if this helps at all. I'm going to make these... Let's get rid of all the blue and orange because... I don't know what I've just done there. I think I just hit Control z which was stupid. Right, Control a was what I was trying to do to highlight the whole grid. We get rid of all the colouring. Now, I'm going to try colouring twos, threes and fives. Let's go red, yellow and blue. Red, yellow, blue in box one. Now, that immediately gives us... Yes, this is good. That gives us blue on the end of one palindrome, red on the other. This cell is two, three or five as well. Now we know it sees blue and red. So that's yellow. This one in the same column is blue. Two, three and five. Ah, look at this. This cell sees them all because of the king's move. Red, king's move to there. Yellow and blue see that. So this now, perfect. This is perfect. This is so clever. This can't be two, three or five. By Sudoku, it clearly can't be four, nine, six, or one. That is seven or eight. We don't need to know which one, because now we know this isn't a seven, eight pair on the white dot, and we are away. That is a three, two pair. Um, it hasn't actually established for me which of red, yellow, and blue is which, but I think that's gonna get almost everything we need done. So, how do I think that works? This seven sees both of those cells, so that's a seven. There we go. This is now a five-eight pair. Um, that seven has to go into column six there. I'm remembering the king's move, not there, there. That's not really on the palindrome, although it looks like it, because it's in the central cell, so it's not actually worth anything. There's a seven in one of those two. Um, mm, I thought I'd done enough with the colouring. That is three or five by Sudoku, because it's season eight, as well as everything in the column. So that three or five goes here. And that is not yellow or red, but it is one of two, three or five. So that's blue. That's blue. Two, the blues don't need a two. And we've placed two in box seven accordingly. The blues are now three or five. Can we carry on? Look at all these twos. Do I know what colour they are? No, sir, I don't. They're not blue. They are yellow or red. So I'll colour them orange, which is, of course, halfway between yellow and red, while I try and work out which colour they are. I can't do it. That's so strange. I don't know, there must be a way that I'm just not seeing of knowing whether those are yellow or red. Sorry, that's me being foolish in some way. Well, never mind, Let, let's carry on as we are. We've got a one in one of those two. Oh no, that is two, three or five. That is yellow, we know that, in the row. Uh, we need a red in this row, could be anywhere. We need yellow in row two, that's here. Now we know that orange is not yellow, so orange has become red, it's moved to that end of the spectrum. Red is two, those become a two. There we go, it was relatively simple in the end. Yellow can't have a two anymore, yellow is three or five. So we've got yellow and blue. Let's actually get rid of all the red colouring. In fact, let's finish off the twos while we've got it open. Two two and one in this box there it is right that's all the reds done so let's get rid of red uh, and we can focus on yellow and blue oh well this is this is three or five and it's not yellow perfect so yellow is five blue is three and we are finishing off i think now we can take all those colours out. We've got a one eight pair here. That's one or eight. Actually, that's one or eight as well. We've got one eight pairs all over the top four rows. 
That five has sorted out eight and five in the middle box. That sorts out eight and one. This is a nice puzzle. Three down here, uh, five, eight pair to do. So the top rows are getting done. Seven here, because we see a one, eight pair in the box. Eight there, seven and nine, nine and five. Then we've got seven and eight at the end of row eight. Uh, that is not an eight. And one end of this palindrome, it's three or five, and the other end, it's five or eight. So I reckon that's a five. Eight there. Eight, one, eight, one. Three and eight in the column. Another one in the box. And this is the last cell in the puzzle, a five. Oh, and I've blundered somehow because I didn't get a tick. So I think I've entered this cell as an eight when I was trying to press three. How recent was that? Very recent. My apologies. Right, that was a three. I might have used it up and up in the grid, so I apologize. Right, so I didn't have this clue here. That's five eight pair at the end of the palindromes. That's less surprise. I was a bit surprised to see that that was coming out. So this is one or five. Let, let me just do this properly. That's on the palindrome, of course. So we get a three there. This becomes a five to finish the row. Now the third, okay, I don't know yet. Actually, let's do this puzzle properly. That's a good thing to do. One or eight there, one, five or eight here. Now, how do we know? King's move. I'd forgotten the old king's move. Five there will do it. So that gives us five, eight, five. Well, I promised you that I'd forget the king's move. I still need it one more time. I can use that one to do eight and one, one and eight. 1 and 8, and that is the solution. So there we go. Gosh, I wonder how wrong I was with the last attempt. Anyway, we have finished now. It's a lovely puzzle. I hope I didn't botch it too much at the end there by mistyping a digit. And uh, thank you, as always, for watching us on the channel. It's great fun to bring you these variants of Doku, and we'll have more tomorrow. Bye for now. Oh, no. Hang on. Sorry, pressing the wrong button. Let's try that again. Bye for now.